Well, it's definitely not as foreign as an 8-string, right? It can't have those same budget-level, let's call them quirks, with high-level specs like neck-through, stainless steel frets, EMGs. That's what a lot of the chips in factories try to do. That's just not gonna work. Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. When it comes to guitars, the internet nowadays kind of makes me feel like I'm in a certain minority. I love metal, but I'm not really about the extended range guitars. I love my six strings. Seven strings I'm getting more comfortable with since I've started reviewing more of them. Still not huge into them though. Eight strings, I'm out. Nope. Love the sound they make, really not into playing them. So enter baritones like this one. Six strings, but bigger and lower. On paper, that sounds perfect. This is part of Harley Benton's Amarok series, so a lot of spec on paper for the money. I've already demoed the normal scale six string, but this is a completely different beast, and as such, I thought it warranted its own video. This is the first baritone I've had on the channel. In general, the first one that I've spent a significant amount of time with, and I have to say, coming from the world of very traditional guitars, it was kind of a ride. Definitely an interesting experience. Let's take a closer look. All right, so I'm actually lucky enough today to have uh, this amp on loan from Orange here at my place. I've been demoing Orange products for a couple of years now, and they were kind of amazed, but like in a bad way. Um, in disbelief, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, that I'd never even plugged into a rocker verb before. It's a flagship, I'm super excited to be taking it out for a test drive. Of course, Jim Root from Slipknot uses them a lot, and I've been told that the best way to use them is for super low chugs, so uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have the Amarok Baritone in drop A sharp, all the settings on the orange are at noon. So here we go, here are the first chugs through the orange rocker verb 100 Mark III. <laughs> That is a very different sound to what I'm used to. Like, I'm having trouble deciding, is it good, is it bad, or is it just not what I'm used to? Kinda not helped by the fact that this is not set up very well, there's like a ton of fret buzz. Right, I'm gonna look up some settings. Two hours, boots and gear. Right, he's got his volume quite high up as well. I've heard that as well about the uh, the rocker verbs. Like you really want to crank oranges in order to get the best out of them. And judging by the fact that it's got a built-in attenuator, um, it seems like Orange knows that too. Okay, what else? Treble down to four. Right, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's pretty thick. You know, what, let's try it with an overdrive. <laughs> All right, stop around. Let's get to business. <laughs> who are some players who are known for using baritones? I guess like Rabia? He uses like the big... I feel like with this amp though, I should go for something maybe a little more slipknotty. Especially since I've got the, uh, the EMG retroactives in here. So, let's think. <laughs> This amp isn't exactly what I'd describe as um, tight. Yeah, it's kind of like raw and dirty and ballsy and all over the place. I kind of feel like this is one of those amps that would sound great blended with just about anything in like a band context or in a mix. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I think I wrote a riff like that. Yeah, I think before I had it in drop B, but it sounds better. Alright, I think I remember it. I'm gonna go record this, and I'll see you back for the demo track.
Now, a couple of things before we jump into it. One, for the demo track, I didn't just use the rocker verb. I ended up using a blend of the rocker verb as the main sound, and then the PD6505 Plus blended in. The two sound so different. I feel like they really complement each other. It's just a really disgusting heavy sound that's like instant stank face. And two, I try to make this clear at the beginning of every video of gear that I'm associated with. Harley Benton does have me on board to help design certain special projects, one of which was the Amarok series. And I feel like it's important to be upfront about that if you're considering this. Uh, definitely do your research, watch other videos by all means. Alright, that out of the way, hit that like button, really helps out, and now let's get into it. So, specs. These are currently sold out, like they sold out super quick, which I'm not gonna lie, it's really satisfying to see so many people enjoy the end result of something I was a part of, but once they're back, here is what you can expect for 550 euros. And if you've already seen my six string video, feel free to skip this part since the specs and colors are basically exactly the same except for the scale length. But if you haven't seen that video, one of the key features of the Amarox is the five piece maple mahogany neck through construction. Mahogany wings, carved mahogany top, and a figured maple veneer. At launch, all the variations come in the same four colors, black burst and blue black burst flame, red black burst, and green burst quilt. Grover locking tuners, Graftec tusk nuts, EMG, retroactive hot 70 pickups, which we'll go over more in depth in a second because they are indeed hot. <laughs> the green burst looks sick in seven string form, by the way, that's the last Amarok I have for this review series, and just like the baritone, it's a completely different beast to either the six or the baritone, so make sure you're subscribed and you've got notifications on so you don't miss it. Actually, in general, notifications are a good idea because at this point, it doesn't really seem like subscriptions do anything. But anyways, yeah, typical to Harley Benton, good specs for the money. Offering good specs at reasonable prices is one of the reasons I agreed to help them out in this limited role. But we've covered all those features before. I was really interested in this version specifically because while I've played baritones before, I've never dedicated a huge amount of time to one like I do when I put these videos together. So now that I've spent a significant amount of time with this, what do I think about baritones in general? Well, it's definitely not as foreign as an eight string. You don't have that massive eight lane freeway of a neck. That's quite big. Impressive. Something I did think would throw me off though is this extra long scale length. That's caused me problems with certain extended range guitars in the past. The PRS SE Holcomb SVN comes to mind. I think I refer to it as being a $15 Uber ride from the first to third frets, and the frets are even further apart on this guitar. So very long scale length and the strings are massive. I usually prefer extra light 942s, and these are 13 to 62s. Uh, which is kind of a big jump. That being said, I didn't really find this to be a huge adjustment, or at least as large as I was expecting. It's not even like jumping to a seven string where the fingerboard is wider, usually you've got a D profile of some sort, and a longer scale length. All those changes combined can throw me off for a bit. Here the neck and fingerboard are the same size as a standard six string, so I found it to be a much smoother transition, at least when it came to rhythms and riffage. I would assume if you're a shreddy lead player and you're spending a lot more time up here, the adjustment period might be slightly longer. It also helps that this is just a really comfortable neck to play. Rounded fingerboard edges, modern scene neck profile, well done stainless steel frets. A couple of the ends on the higher frets were a little sharp, but that's kind of expected for a guitar in this price range. Most of them are well-rounded and flush with the neck. I'm starting to realize that no binding is kind of the move for these more wallet-friendly guitars. In general, the fret ends just tend to be consistently better with rolled fingerboard edges and no binding, whereas with binding, sometimes the fingerboard doesn't feel as nice on the edges and the fret ends aren't as nice either. For setup though, and by now I'll have mentioned these to the Harley Benton team, but there were two main areas that I felt like could have been improved. One, the locking tuners don't need the strings to be wrapped around so much. Like they can literally just be strung through and cut. You guys have pointed this out on a couple of other Harley Benton videos like the EX84 Hetfield mods and the Amarok 6. I didn't really find it to be a problem there, but here it's kind of causing some slippage, which is annoying. It's probably a factory thing we can get them to change. And two, the intonation on this guy was way, way off on some strings and needed some pretty significant saddle adjustments. A little bit of adjustment, I can understand it came from Germany, I'm in Atlanta, but this was really off, as a certain slappy bass player would say. Not epic. 
at all. Now the sound though is epic, especially into the rock reverb. This downtuned baritone with the EMG retroactives is the gym root sound. You heard it in a mix, let's hear it outside of one now. I'm using the rock reverb and an IR of a Mesa 4x12 with B30s mics with an SM57. <laughs> very stank facey sound. I tested the retroactives versus the standard 8160 combo in my video of the Amarok 6 string, link in the cards if you haven't seen that yet. Basically though, um, I like these better. They're brighter, they feel more alive in my opinion. I think they might be my favorite EMGs right now, so it's cool that they come stock in this baritone. It kind of sucks that they're not quick connect for whatever reason, so you can't do the quick swap for a headset or whatever else on the fly. But still, the retroactors are sweet. It's a shame they don't come in more guitars because they deserve more love. And EMG actually did us a favor here and made the pole pieces black exclusively for just the Amarok series, which is sick. So 550 euros for Harley Benton before shipping is kind of a lot. And maybe I'm being too harsh because you're always your own toughest critic and in the general realm of the guitar world, 550 for these specs isn't bad at all, but I think there's definitely some consistency things that should be improved on if you're going to compete in this very crowded price range, right? It can't have those same budget level, let's call them quirks, with high level specs like neck through, stainless steel frets, EMGs. That's what a lot of the chips in factories try to do. That's just not going to work. And this Harley Benton baritone is a good sign. No major flaws. I talked about the fret work. The setup should be better. The cavity roots, you can see where they messed up and kind of repainted in there. Oh, and I forgot the switch. Same one on the Amarok 6 and 7. It's really wiggly for no reason. It's the only thing on this guitar that feels really noticeably cheap. Overall though, as someone who saw these Amaroks go from ideas on paper to now these full production models, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Especially the colors. I mean, this red quilt is probably my least favorite out of the four, but on a baritone, it looks mean. More importantly though, this is like my gateway drug into the world of baritones. There is a ton of low tune fun minus the struggles of extended range guitars and uh, and I need more. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already. That really helps out. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.